But then you get that one customer or client that turns your entire world upside down. And now have your job. It's absolutely horrifying. Meet my customer from hell. The childish pranks. The walnut and dildo delivery accompanied by death threats. Sending these poor elderly people to my house in hopes of a Craigslist tag sale that never existed. The angry voicemails at 3 a.m. in the morning. Even him stealing $2,000 from me and me getting it back. Now you probably have seen the compilations on YouTube about the worst customers ever, Karens, stalkers, people beating each other up on Black Friday. Well, this last Black Friday, I said to myself, oh my God, you think that is bad? Well, wait until you see this guy. So on this channel, you know, we talk a lot about business and selling domains and stuff like that. So this is perfect. You know, when you're starting your agency and you get your first client, you know, this is gonna help you out a bit. Say for instance, you're a small business owner, freelancer, or at least enjoy videos about horrible customers. Perhaps it will help you not get ripped off of your time and your money. So, yes folks, I was put through the ringer by this cock a doodle do and then ultimately robbed. And if I were to give a client the worst customer of the decade award, it would be this guy. So my name is Jamie Lewis. We're a production and marketing studio over here. And as I was saying, this channel, we do a lot of domaining and how to start a business, etc. 20 years of experience with paid internet advertising. So when an experienced business owner needs an advertising consultant and hands-on marketer, I'm at your service. There is an upfront fee to work with me like this, very similar to an accountant or an attorney's retainer. $1,000 a week, and I'm working all the time during the week with that person, like Mr. Miyagi. Cancel at any time. But see, the bad news, the industry that I'm in when it comes to marketing and money, there's a lot of stigma. Similar to used car sales, casinos, tattoo parlors, massage parlors. <laughs> Certain industries, they have a lot of bad actors, but we know customers could be bad actors too. And that's the sad truth. You know, probably you can relate, especially if you work in my industry or heck, you might even work retail and you have to chase down shoplifters all day. So anyhow, this is a story about my customer, Casey Conway. In February of 2023, that's when I met Casey Conman Conway. And then our beautiful union started. Casey called my answering service and then was put through to my esteemed colleague, Jason. Now Casey was asking me if he could hire me as a consultant. So Jason interviewed Casey and on the surface, Casey seemed very knowledgeable and very professional. And then Jason asked me, can Casey come on board? I asked Jason, well, what's his business? It's an Etsy store. Wow, where he sends out lyric prints. You know, like if the bride wants to buy her soon to be hubby a nice gift or vice versa. I mean, he told me that Casey had a few dozen sales already as well, but he tapped out the Etsy advertising. Ooh, this sounds like a great project, right? This had a need for Facebook advertising all over it. That's my thing. I already knew that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna create and manage a high powered Facebook ads campaign. I'm gonna blow up this Etsy business to the moon, I tell you. And the way I was going to do it was gonna expand to not only the wedding traffic, but another niche as well, the get your ex back niche, something I have a ton of experience in. The heartbroken crowd, right? So then Casey would have two traffic avenues and with paid ads, sky's the limit. I thought to myself, this is gonna be fun intellectually rewarding and could produce a great testimonial, a case study, a partner, a great friend. Now for me to take this much time out of my own product development and advertising, as I was telling you, I charge that fee and usually it's $4,000 a month and cancel at any time, et cetera. That's the way it's always been. But Casey only wanted to put down $2,000 towards the retainer. So I took the client. No! I told Jason, I said in two weeks, right? because that's $2,000 worth, must be plenty of time to leave a good impression on him because I'm a Facebook ads genius and I really enjoy doing it. So then he could decide if he wants to stick with me and continue, very straightforward. So on February 24th, Casey pays two payments of $1,000 and then we get on the phone, right? So we talked on the phone for an hour and then we decided on February 27th, three days later would be our first webinar. Everything good so far, right? So in the meantime, I scoured the net for keywords that we could target wrote some good ads, I got to work. That's what I was paid to do. Put my thought process in place, which is very important. So here we go, February 27th, it's my late father's birthday. Get on the webinar, everything's going great. I'm watching Casey's screen, I'm telling him how to set up his Facebook ads. I'm ready to go for three hours and get it all up and running. Now, halfway through the call, we've set up our first campaign in two ad sets for male and female. Now, Casey had some creatives that he felt confident about some videos that he created, right? Okay, cool. So we included them as the ads inside of the ad sets that we created so far. And to tell you the truth, he was okay with Facebook ads already. He was all right. 
it was going to go smooth. He just, you know, he'd never had success before with it, but he's almost there, right? So I had this creative idea. I was like, what if I create a, a graphic that shows the wife opening up the lyric print and loving it, right? And that'd be one of the ads. So that's exactly what I did. So while Casey was creating a new ad set, jumped into Photoshop for 20, created this awesome graphic, right? 20 minutes. And then I tell Casey, hey, I just sent it to you, bro. Check out this graphic I just did. Put it inside the ad set for women. Rotate it. And then something happens. He says to me, I'm confused. Are we doing a new ad set? And I said, no, no, man, you don't need to do a new ad set. You just, I mean, you could if you want, but you know, I mean. We just created two ad sets that are identical except for the gender. Now you want me to create another ad set that is identical with the men's except for different creative? And we're running three ad sets? Not three ad sets, because this would be a matter of you split testing the ad. Facebook ads allows you to create as many ad sets as you want, which would have all the ads inside of them, right? And then you can split test all the ads and all that. And I wanted to add my graphic to the existing video. I explained this. It's not good enough. Not answering my question, though. So do I take the video off of the one that is targeted at men right now and replace it with this? I don't want to do that. I just want to split test the video and the graphic, like have them rotate it. I'm okay. I'm not. I'm sorry if I sound frustrated. I'm very frustrated, Jamie. I'm not getting an answer to my question. Am I running three ad sets? One with the one for women with the video, one for men with video, and one for men with graphic. And I tell him again, no. I'm telling him no, but I'm also explaining. Maybe I should have just said no. That's that's where I'm confused. Right now, we're just split testing gender genders, right? So, what is this graphic for? So the graphic I just sent you in Facebook, that's something that I think would work really, really well for men who are looking for anniversary gifts for, for their wives, for girls. Right, I understand that, but at what point, I mean, are you saying I should use that instead of the video for this ad right now? You can't win. So I tell him again, and I'm, I think I'm making it clear. He's like, well, I'm getting frustrated. You're not answering my question, etc." As I don't know, I, maybe I could have said you could if you want, but there's a better way or like as I was saying, no, I don't know. But anyway, I finally gave in and I said, sure, just set up another ad set. Or am I taking one of those ad sets yeah, out yeah, yeah. and running only yeah, two yeah, ad yeah. sets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. Yeah, I mean, what you're asking me, like, like, I think I'm answering your question. Like, I want to split test. Another word for that is rotate. Right. And you're going to rotate and see for the same so traffic, three, three same assets. gender, same everything, but you're going to see which one outdoes which one, and then see if the video versus the graphic wins. It's called okay, a split and we're doing test. three ad sets. We're doing three ad sets is what you're telling me, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. That was two points. I just needed a yes or no answer to that question. Thank you. So That was awkward and weird. So anyhow, we get off the phone, I present this plan, this awesome plan, an overall plan for the Etsy business. And the next day I hear back from him, he says his laptop is busted. He tells me he wants to do even more. I want to do even more. He wants to work on multiple projects besides Facebook ads. You know, I tell him, I say, hey man, I'm going to reimburse you for the ad spend. You know, no reason to move on to another model. It's like, oh, I hope this doesn't derail what we were working on. I don't want to waste my time, etc." And I usually get really, really good results. Like this guy, Here's a screenshot of our conversation. He preferred audio messages. So look at him a couple years later. His business was like a rocket ship after that. Because I've been there, I've done that. I know what I'm doing, that's what I'm good at. And then this dude, here's another coaching call. Before and after. Turning them into rock stars. All right, but that's enough about me. I have other incentives other than monetary. I want this to work, right? So I ask him, I say, well, look, can we schedule a session on March 8th two weeks in as this is when the, his retainer would run out. And then he explains that we can do so after the laptop is back. He says, I appreciate it. And after sending him some pretty good audio messages in his response to his questions, he explains, okay, tonight's good to have a coaching call. So then in a separate text, he gives me a thumbs up when I send him my plan in audio format. So I'm thinking he likes the plan, right? But then he mentions that he's going to be receiving a settlement very soon, okay? but doesn't know when, a six-figure settlement. And because he doesn't know when he's gonna be receiving the six-figure settlement, he needs to make immediate money now because he hasn't been working. He thought this settlement was going to come and is gonna save him from everything. And so therefore he he's like, oh, it's my bad. I should have, I did, I, I shouldn't have trusted them, but I need to make money now, Jamie. I'm like, wow, it's starting to sound like not what I signed up for, like for only $2,000. I mean, really like you sell a domain for $2,000 through GoDaddy and, and never talk to the customer. So why would I choose to be in a, 
situation like this. So because he needs to make immediate money, he asks if I can consult him with domaining, which was not included in the package, but no, 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 no. I sent him a 14 minute audio message with a lot of information, a few more audio messages. And then he says, yeah, this sounds great. So now we're both very excited and I'm not quite sold yet that this guy is going to be a problem. I still think that he has a lot of potential. It's just, you know, because as time is going, I can't see the future, right? So I spend a few days going back and forth with them, you know, answering every question he has about domaining. After scouring the net for him and finding him 50 choice premium domains, I ask him if I can go to sleep. It's 2, 17 a.m. I've been working this whole time for him. Now I bought him eight domains because he says he has no more money. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? I thought this guy was an advanced guy. So after I buy him these eight domains for $80, he says, thanks, good night. And then I push four of the domains into there. And then the next day he wants more. He asks for more drop lists. He asked me to upgrade him in our system and I deliver. He says, perfect. Now, I don't know if it was because the two weeks were up, but after two more days, he has a breakdown. We're talking big time breakdown, crying on a phone call. I mean, it kind of sounded like, um, it was like really horrible. I mean, this is a grown man. He's almost 50 years old. So we get on another webinar and this is how it ended. I'm like walking on eggshells with you. I piss you off. You get really upset at me really easily. So what I want to do is pay for your business to blow up. Why can't I just get that done? Why can't I write a list in the first 10 minutes of this webinar without you blowing up it? I'm going to go right now. That's not something I want to hear from you. That's, that's not helpful in any way. Goodbye. Note that the Facebook campaign now, although I was going to reimburse him for ad spend, is paused and he doesn't want to do it anymore. And then, to my surprise, he doesn't want to do domaining either. He wants to now go the agency route. All right, so we have the Facebook ads campaign coming. He requested to learn domaining and work with me in domains, and I worked pretty hard on that. And I always honestly believe that an agency can be anyone's side hustle, so it was hard for me to disagree. I was like, well, that's pretty freaking easy. And heck, I could be his first client. So we jump in. So I say, how about you do reels for me? I'll pay you better than you would on Fiverr. And so he starts doing reels for me, and we're getting along good. I'm sending him Venmos. Now I'm fine with this and heck, he'll have money, relieve his stress, and then we can get back to where we started. But then the electricity bill comes. He has a conundrum, all right? He has a big problem with the electricity bill and he is now literally crying on the phone again. I'm not a marketer and a producer anymore. I am a therapist. So I send him the money for the electricity bill. Now there was a period of about a week where he really got on a roll producing reels for me and I paid him around 700 bucks for them. Everything was great. These were the good old times. I even told him I could refer my students to him for real production too. And he also had some good skills with video and ads and graphics and captions. So I was like, you know what? Yeah. I was like, you know what? Yeah, why don't you do marketing for other folks? Heck, I'd be happy to help with the marketing of the marketing. I start copywriting and see, we need to produce a menu with packages, helped him out with that. Got the Fiverr thing going, told him about how he could do it without Fiverr freelancer, but I don't think that really went very far. But the next day, we get on a phone call and he once again apologizes, explains he has a psychiatric issue and he's sorry, but he doesn't want to work for anyone. <laughs> he also reiterates that he needs to make money ASAP. He needs $200 by the end of the month or he is in big trouble. And he starts crying. I say, $200? I'll send you $200 just so you can stop crying and we can get back to work. I literally spend dozens and dozens of hours at least trying but as you can see, it's impossible. Sometimes people just don't want the success. They want the settlement or they want somebody to hire them. But I'm really trying here to help him scale his business, to grow his business. And it's worked for hundreds and hundreds of clients. That's why people seek me out. You better ask somebody. Proof is in the pudding. So now I do something unthinkable that I will never do again. I start working on his Facebook ads again before he has the next 2000. The time is up. Jamie, why are you keep working for this person? What is wrong with you? You know, not everyone is a nice person, Jamie. But here I go, I wake up early, I'm excited, and uh, you know, I already produced the graphics, did the marketing research, and you know, I didn't wanna have wasted time. Time you can't get back. So he asked for a reimbursement for his ad spend, and I had agreed to do this, as I explained in my initial explanation, and I'm a man of my word. 
Jamie, what are you doing? Why are you allowing yourself to be taken advantage of like this? But I send him the reimbursement and I tell him I'm going to order the lyric print from his store. I'm gonna open it up and unbox it on the camera live for an ad. So the ad starts out like this. You've found that special someone and you wanna strengthen the bond between you. You know what the secret to a healthy relationship is? Creative gifts like this. See, now I know for a fact that this is one of her favorite pictures of us. Now what I'm gonna do is submit that picture along with the Ed Sheeran song, Darling, you look perfect tonight. I'm gonna submit both the lyrics and the picture and then the lyrics are like embedded in that picture. And then, oh, she's gonna love it. Cool, right? And when my girl, who I was actually in an argument with, she filmed it with me. This is the way I was like, well, I know you, you're pissed at me, but can we film this ad for my client? She's like, fine. I was like, it's right up your alley. You can be mad at me in the video. And so the video is actually her really angry. But anyway, so she walks in and I film her opening Casey's product, right? Hey. What? How you doing? Look, it's over. Barefoot on the grass listening to our favorite song. Is this a, this is a picture of us with the Ed Sheeran Perfect song? You do love me. I love you. Thank you. You saw the first video, right? Where I was out there and I like show, I order the, the lyric print and then it comes in the mail and I open it. I'm like, oh, now watch how my girl is going to like it. Then the retargeting ad is her opening it. It's genius, right? It's gonna be great. You know, this retargeting campaign is gonna be a real series. And that's what it should be like. You know, it's where there's cliffhangers, right? Now these ads are created for folks who wanna impress a girl. Smart, right? See, there are other audiences that will purchase said product, not just the wedding people. So he starts running the ad and I tell him we should get on a webinar for the retargeting, right? And it seems to be working well. See, so he's like, all right, we got our first clicks or whatever, right? And so I'm like, let's get together so I can show you how to do the retargeting advertising. Bro, I worked really hard on these videos. You know what I mean? So he's like, oh, I have something to do or whatever. He disappears. He pops back a week later saying that he's moving. I guess he got his settlement because he was telling me this. He's like, I'm moving to this beautiful place once I get my settlement. So he pops back a week later on a Friday. I'll never forget this. And he asked me for help with domains again. So he comes to the webinar I did with the rest of my students on Monday and I'm helping him with the domains again. Then on Monday, I log into my email and I see a dispute for his original payments. Yes, I found out that he disputed the initial retainer with his bank on Friday before he asked me for help with the domain names. You, can, you can't make this up. So the original money that he paid me, the $2,000, was yanked out of my bank account. Whoosh, disappears. I'm like, what the hell? This dude actually went to his bank, filled out paperwork, disputes, then comes back online and asks me to keep working for him? Who does that? I've seen a lot of crazy stuff before, but this one takes the cake. Now, it's important to note when someone disputes a charge, even if someone were to apologize, right, and say, oh, sorry, man, it happened by mistake, and pay you some other way, right, maybe that might happen, you have to respond to the merchant processor, though. You have to write a full explanation of what happened. You need to do this to protect your account and explain your side of the story. If you don't, you could lose your processing account. See, when a client does this, it damages the account. So I obviously message him. I'm like, dude, did you purposely do this? This can't be. And I explain that with all of the proof and all the physical work that I did for him, the bank will certainly overturn the chargeback. So overturn it. And then he blocks me. The entitlement. Like the dude is so inept that he thinks I'm going to give him that type of attention, friendship, employment. And in the end, I'm not gonna do anything about him revoking the initial fee that he paid me? Like, who thinks that they could get away with that? So I take screenshots of everything I have on the situation and I submit it to the merchant processor. And then sure enough, three months later, I win! Of course I would! And so the original $2,000 gets sent back into my bank. Cool. And then he unblocks me to send me this. You pathetic keyboard warrior, no talent, crackhead, golem looking, bottom feeding, cartoon organ grinders, dancing monkey. What is this Shakespearean side of him coming out? Okay, we gotta do it with AI. It's only right. 
You may have won a piddling little battle by scamming me for a measly $1,400, but you've started a war you will f***ing regret, you walking birth defect. I've already convinced three of your prospects not to buy your garbage, and I'm just getting started, scum f Oh, okay, yeah, right. Every time you told me you liked me, I said you stank breath, jacked up teeth, malnourished, starving Marvin twerp. What is he talking about? He's talking about himself. Your mom is still paying people to be your friends. What is he talking about? Enjoy my money while you can, leech. You never met someone like me, and you picked the wrong homie to f with gargler. You better watch your bony little back, you half pint, half wit. He's so mad that he lost this chargeback. I'm getting rich now, but I'm not listening to your syphilis brain stupidity and I know where you live. Not that I'm saying I know anything about the brick that may or may not be coming through your front window, or those slashed tires, or why you might be waking up in the hospital. Meanwhile, I'll keep enjoying living rent-free in your deformed little head while you spam me with drivel I'll never read. What are you gonna do, you dickless peewee punk poser? Hope and pray that I'll open my spam folder and see your verbal diarrhea there again. And hope and pray that maybe this time I'll open and read your spineless, sniveling idiocy instead of just laughing my ass off again. Ha 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 nah. I'll never see a single asinine word you write, dip but you just read all of this, didn't you, jackass? Did I hurt your poor little feelings again, numb nuts? Die mad, you punk little bitch, and soon. What grown man talks like this? And I never did get the brick through my window. Never got that payment for the electricity bill back either. How can someone be a crybaby? and then a tough guy, crybaby tough guy. What mental illness is that? Bipolar? Borderline personality, perhaps. He announces on his Facebook page, he's starting a new handyman business. <laughs> Handy and helpful. So with help from AI, I made some movie posters for him. And then he announces Tahoe marketing because marketing is his passion. That one's even funnier. <laughs> But then he gives up on both businesses and gets a job working as a call setter. Not even a closer. And get this, guess who he's setting for? Laurel Langemeyer. You know, the guru that scammed millions from victims and the SEC has an ongoing case against her. With a jury trial. That's no joke. That could be jail time. Now, because I had purchased his product and I'm actually a client of his, he had my home address. So aside from expressing how impressed with himself that he knows where I live, he sends a dildo and a bag of walnuts in the mail. These are the types of attacks and, and weapons that he's going to use. You cannot make this up. And then of course, leaving some convenient voicemails. Little cartoon bitch, got your number. You'll be getting a bunch of phone calls and won't you now, yeah. And I got your home address, you little bitch. You'll be getting some visits too, you now that's not all. This dude actually puts an ad on Craigslist telling people that there's an estate sale to happen all Saturday and Sunday. So he might've thought this was funny, but the result was these poor elderly people showing up at the house thinking that they were gonna attend an estate sale. And instead they get my dogs barking at them. I mean, these poor elderly people, they were not sure where to go. So I had to put a sign on the door, letting everyone know that there was not a tag sale at that location. Very sad. So I set up some security. The wife slept with her 12 gauge for a couple days, pulls it out every time there's a noise. So since I'm not so bad with SEO, I simply uploaded all of this material like a boomerang to the internet and SEO'd it for his name permanently and had his Etsy store canceled. Never heard from this idiot again. So, in conclusion, and what you can learn from this, what did I learn from this? Well, if you make yourself available, it is hard to make yourself unavailable. If you deliver, it's hard not to deliver. If you send money, it's hard not to send money. You see what I mean? Basically, do not negotiate with terrorists. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a slippery slope, and you will have to continue delivering forever. I mean, he literally became obsessed with asking me for more advice and using my infrastructure even after the project was over. On numerous occasions, he approved of my direction and there was never any discussion of dissatisfaction or mentions of refunds or that goods were not as described or anything like that. I was working for him and he was driving me every day for over two months. So you'll definitely agree with me. I'm not gonna be doing $2,000 retainers anymore. In fact, $4,000 
one month is not really enough time anyhow, right? But I would say if you feel you're a little bit better than Casey was, then fill out the form at badassclass.com slash form. And we'll see if we're a good fit. You know what I mean? Maybe perhaps it could be 10 times better than what I experienced there. I think you'll be happy to know that it's pretty rare that you come across a client like that where it's gonna be a very uh, unpleasant experience. Usually it's a very pleasant experience. I really enjoy working with people, but mental illness is a virus and there's big inflation and people are out of their minds. I recommend that you do all digital products or sell domain names and please do not get yourself into that situation. These people who pay money for services, and they do not respect your time because no one respects them. If they're getting yelled at by a boss, they're gonna yell at you. Why would you put yourself in that situation when you could sell domains? So ladies and gentlemen, now you know how to successfully fight a dispute and not get into the situation in the first place. You know, all I did was lose a couple hundred dollars. But now you can see why it's not really a good idea to give freebies. You know, if somebody didn't pay for the extra stuff, don't give them extra stuff. I lost time. See, a lot of the extra service I was delivering was in hopes he would become a great partner, affiliate distributor, or employee, and that's just not realistic anymore, right? Plus, I had the faith that he would pay me for the time after that initial two-week period. Nope. Never go on faith. You never know with people, but I should have known better after those initial temper tantrums. I'm always giving people the benefit of the doubt. You live and you learn. So yeah, guys, if you think you got what it takes, fill out the form at badassclass.com form. And then we'll see, you know, if you're a good fit again. Hopefully it won't end up the way that one did. You know what I'm saying? But Jason is very good at qualifying you guys. Hopefully you're good to work with. You know what I'm saying? It's not hard to find someone who's good to work with. I think it's more difficult to find someone who is that entertaining. You know, find an example like that. That's not easy to find. All right, so I hope you like this video. If something like this ever happens again, I'll be excited to show you but I don't think it will. And I will be back with more videos. Bye.